Hi, this is Steve Larson, one of the pastors at Calvary United Methodist Church in Frederick, Maryland, bringing you one more uh, Bible study. We're calling this People in Tight Spots, kind of considering places in the Bible where we find God's people are troubled, they don't know where to turn, and they find that when they turn to God, there is some hope. So we've looked at several passages. Today I want to look at a passage from Matthew, and it's Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. So here's a situation where Jesus had been with the disciples, and they had a large crowd that had gathered to hear Jesus preach and to see him heal the sick and to be close to this person who had been of such interest. And uh, the day is getting late, and the disciples realize, we got a problem here. We don't have enough food to feed these people. They're going to get hungry. They're going to turn to us, and we're just not going to have any way to help them. So in this moment of anxiety, of uncertainty, of feeling pressed upon by the crowds and the demands, they turn to Jesus. And Jesus um, responds, not immediately by working some miracle, but by calling the disciples to consider the resources that they have at hand. He asks them, what do you have? And so he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass, and then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and he looked up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. We have a language here that's very reminiscent of the way in which the Last Supper is, is shared, how Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. How he took the cup and blessed it, gave it to his disciples. Here we're finding a similar pattern. At the end of the day, the disciples wanted the crowds to go away. They saw it was getting late. But Jesus said to them, let the people remain and instead give them some food. The character of Jesus is exhibited on the, in this part of the passage. His compassion is without bounds, even if he has traveled far and healed the sick and did so many things, his priority was still the crowds that followed him. It also tells, this passage also tells us that Jesus uses other people to bless others. You know, Jesus called the disciples to consider what it is they had at their disposal, what resources they could use and that he could use through them. So they find what they have. Initially, they didn't even think about what they had, but Jesus calls them to consider what they have, and they place it in his hands. Now, another thing we realize here is that Jesus is able to work a miracle. Jesus is able to take what we have and to multiply it and to make it into enough to satisfy the needs of many. So one way of understanding the miracle that took place is to think about how Jesus was able to take a small amount of food and in his hands turn it into a great deal of food, enough to feed so many that by his thanking, receiving it from the disciples, giving thanks to God and passing it on to others, it was multiplied so that it could satisfy. What seems small in God's hands, in Christ's hands, can become a great deal. But you know, there's another way to consider what's going on here in the story. I understand in those days it would not be uncommon for travelers, for those who spent some time on the road, to carry a little bit of provision with them. They might have room in their, in their, in a sack or a bag or in some of the um, things that they carry to have a little bit of food set aside, a snack or maybe even a meal that they could have along the way. 
although this crowd had gathered to hear Jesus, they really didn't have particular connections with one another. They were there because they wanted to see Jesus heal or they wanted to hear his words. And they didn't have particular ties with one another. But one way to understand this, what's going on in the story is that something about the way in which Jesus shared that day, something about the words that he had offered and the love that he shown and the works of healing that he offered formed a connection that the people had in the crowd. And now, instead of being strangers to one another, they were part of a fellowship. They were part of a certain kind of community that was gathered around Christ. And now they began to, to trust Christ and to listen to his word and to begin to act in some new ways. And in that time in which Jesus had the crowd sit down upon the grass, hearts were opened and sacks and uh, belts and, and bags and wallets were opened so that some of those food items that had been stored away for personal use could then be shared with others. And somebody might pull out some figs and say, hey, I happen to have some, some figs here. Would you want to share some? Or somebody might have some other bits of bread. Others may have something to drink. And all of a sudden there was a, a picnic of sharing around among others who were close by. So in addition to the bread that Jesus blessed and shared, there was sharing that came out of some of the private uh, stock that people in the crowd had brought that day. Now, I suppose we could consider this interpretation as being a, a way of downplaying the miracle of what Jesus had accomplished by blessing and passing out the food. You know, it kind of maybe takes away from the idea that that little bit of food became a great bit of food. Well, I suppose that's one way to think about it. But when you think about it in another way, maybe there's even a greater miracle here. It's one thing to make a lot of food, but it's another to change hearts and to be able to allow people to begin to trust and to share with one another, even among folks who had been strangers just a short time before. Maybe the change that took place that allowed that sharing is actually the greatest miracle of all, that Jesus changed the way the people were that day. And the miracle was that all could then benefit. So we see Jesus as someone who had great compassion that he reached out to people and uh, didn't dismiss their need. And even when the disciples were anxious and felt overwhelmed, Jesus directed them to find what resources they had and to allow them to put it, bring it forward, to share and to be put to use. And then Jesus finds a way to break down barriers that separate, to allow people to begin to trust and to be able to find satisfaction and to be fed, literally by the goodness that is offered. There are ways that we can share what we have. We can find the resources that are available and maybe take them out of places that we have been holding back and offer them to others in love. This is what the story tells us. Well, we'll continue to explore more stories of people in tight spots and what God has to offer to us. A word of hope, and joy and possibilities where we may have only felt a dead end.